one of the uh, arguments this this happens all the time with uh, when when young people start getting into uh, there's there's some big influx of young people into socialism is that at some point they are like oh no it's a myth that it doesn't work you know oh no no when people say that they are they're making things up it's capitalist lies okay what what the problem one of the epistemological problems that Karl Marx really had is that when he was trying to disca- describe early human life and human life that uh, there was like sharing sharing caring care bears who all shared with each other constantly and everybody was involved in in like the work that it took to make everything so a lot of times in American among like kind of American socialist type thinkers um, American socialists will then kind of quasi deify what they think was the lifestyle of Native Americans that utilized every last piece of the buffalo Nothing wasted, you know, and they are at harmony with nature. Um, And and it's like, they're at harmony with nature. They they would have domesticated the buffalo. (laughs) I'm sorry. They would have preserved the horse, which they at some point had, and they would have domesticated the buffalo and the deer and the moose. And and, uh, no, no, uh, nature doesn't, harmonize (laughs) like it's just not it's just this weird romantic thing that people like coming up with you know that it's like no they were lucky they they did as well humans did as well as they did uh on this continent at you know and actually did to the point where we we've actually been amazed to find out as time went on how well humans did on the in the americas as far as traversing them from uh, north to south. And we, we've been kind of amazed, actually, at the speed because we just didn't figure people could do that with, like, no tools at all that we understood capable of dealing with megalithic uh, predators and such. So, you know, it's like kudos to, to you know, the, the hardcore living. <laughs> sort of the survival of humanity. Um, so, th- this... But... This then, of course, doesn't allow people to necessarily establish city-states and developed cities and such that develop like what you find in Greece. Because the issue with, like, say, Greece is that there were lots of other places around. Like, in the immediate vicinity, there was all these other... Uh, other city states and countries so the the greatness of Greece is really that it ended up being people who learned from Syria from Egypt from what we call Sicily now um, from uh, uh, was it the Etruscans that there were different groups of people that they, they interacted with that they were able to put together what we call philosophy, which is uniquely Greek. And, um, and, and, and that there is no socialism, there is no looking at categorizing the life of what... Like, nobody would live like that in ancient Greece once philosophy was established and once there were cities. Nobody was going to go back to megalithic hunting... And, and they feared those people ever getting organized and deciding they just wanted to hunt them within their cities. <laughs> and uh, so when we talk about, a lot of times, oh, they've been fighting over there, over that piece of land for ever so long. And it's like, well, no, no, I don't think you get it. There's people who are in cities and then people who are at the level of just hunting humans practically. And that that's the fight that's been going on thousands of years, so to speak. You know, it's this... Eventually, people are fighting over territory, which yields mostly something valuable, like like olives or wine grapes or something like that, which that area was famous for for a long time. So, you know, now it's oil and gas and gold and stuff like that. Um, The socialists end up having this problem of that 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 that's history. It's not this abstract kind of romantic concept. Of uh, before we used money 
their representations for value at all times, but also using money has made slavery completely obsolete. This is actually something that socialists never really deal with, is that one, um, the, Fr- the, the, the French the, and the French Revolution wasn't something that, that abolished slavery. It, it, yeah, it, it didn't. Um, it, it required the, them losing one of their holdings to a slave rebellion that made the French Revolution like, maybe slavery not so good, you know. But it doesn't matter. They kept extracting money from Haiti for <laughs> hundreds of years afterward. But, um, so, the, but the, the thing that really... Uh, uh, socialists don't want to get into is that one of the criticisms, and it was very true, of uh, the southern slaveholders, especially the large plantations, is you could just pay people. I mean, and this was totally accurate. They're like, you could just pay people to do the work. You actually make enough money. You're the largest of the plantations. Why are you even doing this? Because it really wasn't worth. It, there, it wasn't efficient. Slavery is not efficient. People want to believe it is. <laughs> it's not efficient. Um, and you even get this, like, this is the thing that people don't get by looking at the, the biblical narrative. They're not looking at what, like, it says becomes of the Jewish people. They get conquered. They, they you know, there's some, they're in some foreign land. After so many generations... They're, they're working for, fundamentally, the government. They, and, and, it's, and, and the thing is, though, that they, they, there's indications, like, no, this person's being compensated. You know, they're not in some shed someplace, you know. Um, and so there's market economics is this key aspect of life and trade and things like that that's just very normal. And we know even Native Americans had their own systems of having things that, that counted for other things, were symbols for other items. Um, and that they had market economics up and down the coast, and that it was trade. It was You had to trade things for things. It wasn't carrying share bears. Um, and then beyond this, you end up getting this issue of... Um, then, it, it, like, when, once you get into, like, something like South America and Central America, it becomes obvious that there had to be an understanding. Why would somebody be buried in a jade suit if jade wasn't valuable? Why would they have things like jewelry if the material wasn't rare and therefore valuable? Um... You know, even the idea of feathers and things like that, were they rare? Were they considered valuable? And, and so, and, and that's just simply the reality of it. There is no, there's no world that there isn't like people establishing value to things that you therefore have to like trade labor for. That, that, that's a pretend world. That, that there's something else other than that. And, so I was like, one of the, the key things that, that a lot of times the older socialists don't tell the younger ones is technology transfers. One of the issues with all socialist economies in, in the, the, the hundred some countries that tried it, they end up requiring technology transfers because they can't develop technology. They kill all of the intellectuals, or they say, if you want money for your intellectual endeavors, too bad. So the people leave, or, or they vanish. Um, and so <laughs> they, the, these countries end up with then nobody to make highly advanced technology. So they get technology transfers, and they get technology transfers usually from the United States. <laughs> And you could really look it up. It's always a part of some kind of negotiations or foreign aid or something else. And agree to technology transfers. So when you finally like find out about it, you look up like the history of the Soviet Union. You find out 
hell of stuff in the Soviet Union is being made by like German companies. And German companies that capitalist com companies were in the USSR making things because the USSR could not make advanced technology. And, and, it, it, and, and that they could, had even a hard time then when they had training programs, training people in it because unfortunately they, they, this was something that they started to realize like cultural capital um, that Thomas Sowell developed the theory of is that you needed multiple generations of a kind of discipline toward this and um, this being kind of a, some concepts even being more normal. <clears throat> um, the kind of rigor it would take to study a subject being normal when a lot of people were coming out of societies that were really, really old and, and they, they and societies that were on the step and were reliant completely on animal power um, so it, they didn't it just wasn't the same kind of people as uh the, the, the super extremely technologically advanced Germans at the time. So, yeah. There you go.